bosses. A boss in a video game is a very important computer controlled opponent. Bosses generally are far stronger than the other opponents the players have faced up before, challenging the player's mastery and skills they have learned so far, and they are also the build up to the big climaxes, making the game a whole lot more intense and interesting. Hi, my name is Andrew. Hi, I'm Giacomo. We are the makers of Tadpole Tales, and welcome to Peony and the Lost Voice Devlog, an adventure platformer where you play as a tiny dog that punches with his voice in a 2D hand-drawn whimsical world where the sun and the moon have stopped moving. We have a Steam page open, it would really mean a lot if you could support us by wishlisting the game on Steam, but anyways, let's begin with the devlog. Giacomo and I spent a significant amount of time thinking about who and what could be our first boss. It definitely needs to be a living part of our story's ecosystem with a complete story and, well, actually, I will leave it to Giacomo to explain it more. In Belletti's devlog, we introduced you to the first boss of the game, Tuba Goat. The concept of this enemy came from a team meeting between me, Andrew, and our sound designer Tomer, who commented on how cool it would be to have an enemy that plays its big horns like a tuba to perform sound attacks. We were instantly hooked on the idea, and thought that a goat would be perfect for something like that. As you can see from these early sketches, I had quite a lot of fun thinking of what its design could look like. Considering that this boss should gracefully float around the sky, I drew his fur like a cloud, which not only gives the visual impression of something light, but also helped a lot in solidifying the theme behind the fight. After finishing the sketching phase and finalizing the design of the boss, I drew this concept art that shows the arena the battle should take place, the peak of a mountain on a starry night. For a boss fight itself, Andre and I did some brainstorming regarding what attacks this boss should have and what skills we want the player to master in order to beat it. This boss is supposed to move around a lot, mixing charging attacks with some shooting ones that force the player to constantly keep moving around the arena. We came up with three different phases of the fight to mix new things to the basic pattern of attacks and even add a transformation of the boss, which we will show you soon as we are still working on it. Feel free to subscribe and stay tuned for our next devlog to see what that looks like. The first animation of the tuba goat I made is this idol animation, which was featured in the last devlog, but now it's all cleaned up. As soon as this one was done, I passed it to Andrew to test the way this big boy could fly around during the fight. Now, in order to create this floatiness effect, I started playing around with Bayesian curves. There's a great tutorial by Alexander Zotov, which I recommend if you want to make something similar yourself, and there's also this stunningly beautiful video explaining how Bayesian curve work by Freya Holmer, links in the description. After implementing it to Unity, I think we solved the first part of the puzzle. I decided to use the same solution that moved the enemies from Tattle Tales to Pinny, which is a target joint 2D component. And I personally think that this component is really underrated. If you've made games before, you've probably heard that usually it is a bad idea to mix physics with transform, since they usually can break physics if the objects collide. This component solved the issue, because it is basically a bridge between the two with its anchor attribute. The anchor is moved by transform, and the body is then moved in relation to that using an elasticity, which is physics. I can attach the anchor to the Bayesian curve, then have the tuba goat move along that whilst having physics apply to it. It creates this elastic move, and you can change the rigidity freely in the component window. This bouncy feel was something I really wanted to achieve, and I think this is giving the tuba goat a nice cloud-like movement effect. Oh, and also, on top of that, I can also apply this very nice knockback effect for when the tuba goat shoots a giant thunder projectile, making it more cohesive. After that, I made a charge and chase attack, plus two different shooting animations. In the first one, Tuba Goat shoots one single big thunder bullet. Meanwhile, in the second one, he shoots a series of smaller bullets, one after the other. As regards the bullets, at the moment we are using the same thunder bullet in both options, but the plan is to have something different for the smaller ones. We are thinking of some interesting patterns for these bullets to make the fight very, very exciting. I tested Giacomo's animations in Unity, and it seems to be working really well, especially that knockback effect I mentioned earlier. This is starting to look a lot like a boss now. I then put the moves together in a behavior tree, and I just simply slapped a random selector that randomly selects an attack move from the options available. This is just temporary as I'm thinking of adding some stage dependencies in the future, having the boss to pick a specific set of moves depending on their health. But this is how it looks so far. What do you guys think? Does he look menacing? What other attacks should the tuba goat have? Let me know in the comments below. 
Apart from this first batch of assets for Tubagut, I focused on completing all the other character animations we need for the demo. Penny was missing a got an item animation, which is not totally inspired by Zelda, mind you, and the death, or should I say lose a life animation. When Penny loses, the screen should turn black. With only a stunned Penny in the middle shown for a moment before he disappears, then after a fade out, the player gets to start playing again after a bunch of a few seconds. The other missing animations were the defeat animations of the boar and the bat animation. Enemies. At first, the idea for these foes was to only get dizzy and lay on the ground, getting up again only if the player exits the screen and then comes back. This brought up some issues related to where the enemies might end up located when they die, and as a result, we opted for a more common you defeat them, they disappear behind a smoke cloud approach. Oh, and another thing, I've started putting together all the different background elements together in the game, such as the different tilesets, the trees, the bushes, and so on, following some valuable feedback from our previous video. I really drew the spiky hazards to make them easier to spot and distinguish them from each other. The parallax needed some tweaking too, and even if it can be surely polished even more, I would say it's at a much better stage now. This is not just for getting a taste of a possible final look of the game, but it's essential for me to see where I can make adjustments for readability and especially draw a more definitive look of the bark punch, the sound projectiles and the VFX. I need to make sure they look good and they're super clear to see, which is going to be a challenge, but hopefully I will find some good solutions. I have in addition fixed a small penny jump issue with bark jump by making sure that no matter what happens, if the player press bark jump and jump in the same time or later, they will always end up in the same height. This way not only it feels more satisfying, but it might make level design more streamlined with less issues. Finally, our technical programmer worked on the respawn system. I can't really explain it, but I know somebody who can. My name is Benji, and I also work on Penny. So, Penny in the Lost Voice features a looping game world, where the player can expect to walk from one end of the world to the other, and end up back where they started, without seeing a single loading screen. To avoid loading the entire game into one huge scene, I've split up the world into chunks. Using a doubly linked list structure to connect each chunk to its neighbors, we can asynchronously load in the next chunk while unloading the previous one. But what happens if you need to move to a disconnected chunk, or one further down the chain that you don't have a reference to? Say, for example, you set your spawn point in chunk 1, but Penny dies several chunks away in chunk 5. To tackle this issue, we built a World Chunk Manager, which caches information about Penny's last spawn chunk. The respawn system communicates with the Chunk Manager and parses the data, passing the chunk name to our scene system as the name of the scene to load in. The second half of the chunk name correlates to a spawn location, which lives on each world chunk as a key value pair between name and position. Using a simple Looney Tunes style scene transition to black out the screen, we can unload all of the current chunks, reset the game, and re-enter in the correct chunk without the player noticing all of the work going on in the background. Now, in my life, I've managed to hop on a plane and visit the love of my life, Giacomo, with my girlfriend. Yes, it took like three years to see each other again, but finally we managed to do so. And it looks like London really wanted our bromance to shine, since for all the entirety of Andrew's trip, the weather was sunny and warm and amazing. This is also the reason why our devlogs got delayed. We also had to do some administrative work for Tadpole Tales and the business. Some of the stuff we should have done a lot sooner if COVID wasn't a thing. But hey, I'm just glad we're finally back together. We also met up with Polymars and went to see the Natural History Museum. It was really cool to see the fossils and mineral stones. And of course, here are some random footages of what I did during my time in London. Here is us fighting for a bill to pay, as usual. Here is some amazing food we had. Here is us trying to make the intro of this video, but the audio quality ended up too bad. Here is us two killing deers, or I, I think they were deers. You can clearly see Giacomo is a very skilled hunter, and you can tell that by how close he's pointing to the screen. Overall, it was a great trip, we have fueled our game dev energy, and are ready to get back to work. And now, it's time for a new poll. We want to ask you, which balloon do you prefer for this little guy? A or B? And why is he flying? Feel free to write in the comments below and vote on our Discord to let us know which one it is. Since the last devlog, we received a bunch of new awesome fan arts. We feel so grateful for all the love shown to our doggo. Thank you so much. 
And that's all for this week. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please consider giving us a like and subscribe to be part of our journey. You can support us by wishlisting the game on Steam. And with that being said, I wish you all a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye bye. bye. What do I say? <laughs> Some. Hello, everyone. Hey. One next. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs>